Welcome to this quick tutorial on how to navigate your Microsoft Teams application. We're going to start in the upper right hand corner where you'll see some icons. The first one allows you to pop out your chat session so it becomes its own separate window. You can also use the following icon to add additional people to your chat session. And here is your screen sharing option where you can actually share your screen or an application you have opened with members in your chat session. These buttons allow you to either place an audio call or a video call with the person or the people you're chatting with. Probably the most important icon in this upper right hand section is your status and preferences. You can upload your picture, and if you don't, it will show the initials of your first and last name. By clicking on the image, you now have access to set your presence. You can set it to available, busy, do not disturb, be right back, appear way, or even appear offline. You can also type in a status message for everyone to see. Later on, in a separate tutorial, we will look at the settings option. We're now going to navigate to the far left side of the Microsoft Teams window where we will find the navigation bar. The first icon on the navigation bar is your activities icon. When somebody mentions your name in a chat or likes a message or adds you to a, a group or a team, those types of notifications will appear in the notification window. The next icon is your chat icon. This, is, this opens your chat window, which is the one we're in now. It's also the most commonly used window within Microsoft Teams. Following the chat icon is the Teams icon. This is where you can actually create a team of colleagues. Once you create a team, underneath that team, you can have separate channels so that individuals from your team can work on individual projects. The calls icon will open up a dial pad where you can dial a number. You will also have access to all your contacts, including a speed dial section. So you can just click and call somebody who you frequently reach out to. The files icon shows you all the recent files you've been working on and also gives you access to your OneDrive. Then you have additional icons for additional applications. In fact, clicking on the three dots will show you a list of applications that you can add and pin to that navigation bar. Clicking the More Apps link will open up a window to an app store. This apps icon at the bottom of the navigation bar will do the same. And then you have the help section where you can access a database of frequently asked questions and other help resources. Now let's look at the actual chat window. Here is where you would type your message. The paper airplane icon is how you would send it. There's plenty of options when it comes to chatting with an individual or a group. There is formatting options. You can also set a priority for your message. You can attach files. You can react to them with emojis. You can put in a GIF, a sticker, or you can attach a stream video. You can also give somebody a praise. Or if you need an approval, you can ask for approvals within your chat session. Not to mention you can get your local weather and in the three dots will give you additional options for chatting. And at the top of your chat window, you have an option, a sorting option or a filter option called files. This is very helpful because if you're looking for a file that was attached during a chat session, you don't have to scroll through hundreds of replies and instant messages to find that file. You can just filter by file. You can also filter by activity. As you can see in my recent chat windows, I have a lot going on. I have individual chats. I have some group chats. I even have chats that took place during a meeting. Trying to search for an individual within your recent chats could be very difficult unless you use the filter option which is the funnel icon at the top of the window. By clicking on this funnel, you can now type in the person's name 
And any chat that that person was involved in would show up at the top of the list. You can also click on the three dots and look specifically for chats that had to do with meetings that took place. Now, some group chats may have a lot of chatter and those notifications could be a nuisance during working hours. So some folks like to mute some very busy and active group chats and then maybe at the end of the day come back and search for those group chats that you muted. By doing so, they will show up at the top of your list. Also, you can filter by unread chats and only the unread messages will show up at the top of your recent list as well. Finally, to create a new chat, you simply want to click on the new chat icon. This will open up a new chat window. You'll be able to search for a person's name. You can also add multiple people to that chat. One best practice when you create a group chat is to change the name of the group chat so you can later identify it. And that is a quick tutorial on how to navigate your Microsoft Teams application.